In our earlier videos, we went through the process of setting up and configuring a job, including setting the stock size. Now let's turn our attention to the process for configuring the operations. Operations are the building block of the path job. They're created with one of the icons on this part of the toolbar. Any objects that the operations create will be created underneath the operations node of the tree. For most of the operations, you simply select some of the geometry from the model and click on the button to create the operation. Clicking on apply will create the path with the default settings. Not all objects require pre-selection. For instance, contour will use the perimeter of the part and automatically create the path. Likewise, mill face will create a path using the top most planar surface parallel to the XY plane. Other operations can use a combination of this. For instance, drilling by itself will create a drilling path using all of the drillable holes. However, if a drillable location is pre-selected, that will be used exclusively in the creation of the operation. All operations have a task panel associated with them, which can be accessed by double-clicking the object in the tree. The task panel is broken into a series of tabs. Base geometry includes the base elements or sub-elements from the model that are used in the calculation. The operation tab typically contains any of the properties that are unique to this type of operation. Depths and heights are similar across all of the different operation types. The task panel only contains properties that are most often accessed. The data pane, accessed from here, can be used to configure all of the properties associated with the operation. And some operations have properties that are not listed in the task panel. For instance, our drilling operation has a return location setting which chooses between the G98 and G99 mode for return. Jobs have four main functions and we're going to cover them one at a time. The first function of an operation is to assist the user in identifying and selecting valid geometry. If I hover my pointer over a face, it'll turn yellow to indicate pre-selection, and a click will turn it green to indicate full selection. This is true for faces, edges, and vertices. If I click on the drilling operation, you'll notice that I can no longer select the face or an edge. However, if the face is circular, or if the edge is circular, selection is still allowed. This is because the drilling operation is filtering the sub-geometry and only allowing selection of those elements that it identifies as valid drillable targets. The next thing the operation has to do is calculate any material to be removed and any starting and ending values that would affect how the path is calculated. Consider a mill face operation that we'll use to clear the top of the model first in preparation for any subsequent operations. The actual material to be removed by this operation depends not only on the model itself, but also on the stock object, which will be used to derive how many step downs are necessary, and will also control whether additional material exists around the model on one or more sides. Other values like the clearance and safe height and the start and final depth also need to be calculated. Without selecting anything, I'm going to click on the mill face operation and click apply. You see that our path is generated and it's quite dense but does respect the stock boundaries. If we click on our mill face operation and scroll down in the property pane, we'll see some of the details about how it's calculating its start and ending values. There's a section called Op Values, which has three properties underneath it. But if you click on them, they'll be grayed out and you won't be able to change the values at all. These are informational only. These three properties hold the value that mill face calculates taking into account the tool diameter, the stock, and the model itself. In this case, it calculates that the final depth should be 30 millimeters, which indicates the top of our face. 
The start depth is 45 millimeters, which comes from the top of our stock. And the tool diameter comes directly from the tool. Scrolling back up to the top, we have a depth section, which includes those same values again, 30 millimeters for our final depth, 45 millimeters for our start depth, and our clearance height and safe height as well. What this shows us is that the final depth of 30 millimeters is coming from the operation's own calculation of it. If I click on this property, you see that there's a blue indicator showing that the value is coming from a function. If I click on the blue indicator, it'll open up a dialog showing me what that calculation is. Now the software I'm using to record this video kind of messes with my windows a little bit. In your case, it'll probably present as a dialog pop-up box. In this case, op final depth is a value coming from the operation and the result is 30 millimeters. If I leave it as it is, it's automatically calculated, and if the model changes, it'll recalculate automatically. However, if I want to override this and hard code a value, I can simply discard this value and then type any value I want into the input. Looking at a slightly more complex example, the clearance height is set at 50 millimeters. In this case, it takes the start depth of the operation, which was 45 millimeters, from our stock object and then adds to it a clearance height offset which comes from the setup sheet. We'll get into setup sheets in a later video. For now, trust me that this value is set to 5 millimeters. So, taking the top of the stock at 45 millimeters and adding 5 gives us a result of 50 millimeters. If we want to change this equation, we can either do the same thing again by discarding the value and changing the equation, or we could actually change the equation itself. I'm not going to do that at this point, but you have a lot of options for changing how the calculation of values is done. And these can be saved into the setup sheet so that it's automated the next time around. Depths and heights can be a little confusing, so let's take a minute to clarify these definitions. On my screen I've got a model of a part held in clamps on a milling table and the stock is visible. Let's set up a pocket operation to clear these two pockets and look at what the various depths and heights looks like. Clearance height indicates the height above the, all of the clamps and obstructions on the table. It's a safe height for all operations and between all operations. So generally clearance height is used to get the cutter into position in order to perform an operation. Safe height is taken from the, the model and the stock top and any offset as indicated in the setup sheet. The safe height is a safe height to move between various parts of an operation, but it's not safe to move between operations. So for instance, if our pocket operation was working in this region and then needed to move over to here, it would only retract to the safe height and then move over here. However, if, it, if the cutter was at this location before the operation, it would move all the way to the clearance height before wrapping into the first position for the pocket. Start depth indicates the first depth at which material is removed. This is generally the top of the stock. Final depth is either the bottom of our feature, the bottom of the model, or slightly below the bottom of the model depending on the type of operation that we're configuring. Step down depth is just that. It indicates the, the distance moved on each subsequent step down. Finish depth is a way of forcing the operation to leave a set amount of material in place for the final pass to remove. For instance, if we wanted our final pass in this pocket to have one half millimeter to remove, we could configure 0 0.5 for the finish depth. Then the step down depths would be calculated in such a way as to leave a half a millimeter for the final pass. The last job of the operation is to take all this information from the user and actually generate a path. If you accidentally create your operations in the wrong order, double click on the job, switch to the work plan, and reorder them by dragging them here. Or double click on the operations node and reorder them here. If you do this, you'll see a blue indicator 
on the operations node indicating that it has to be recalculated. This may be true for individual operations as well. If the path doesn't look right after you've made a change, right-click on the operation, select Mark to Recompute, and click on the Recompute button. Well, I hope that's been somewhat helpful. That's a quick overview of all of the operation workflow. Um, there, each of the operations has a little bit of peculiarity and, and uh, uniqueness to it, and it just takes some time uh, experimenting and getting into it. All, as always, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them below or come out to the FreeCAD forum. Thanks.